All right, well, it's down there, and as you can tell, it's significantly quieter. Um, the system's not completely done, because although I have one ventilation fan down there to cool the engine block itself, because um, it's a high temperature one from a wood stove, I don't have any other ones. So I'll have to get another one eventually, and then route something. I mean, there's, just, there's a lot of holes in there right now. So the transom's not totally closed up, and there's no you know, hatch for it yet, but um, eventually they will be sealed up and then I will have to make really good air ventilation in order to keep that thing running um, while we're under sale or while we're doing something else. So yes, I'll have to figure that out. Leave your suggestions in the description because I'm like, I've got some ideas and they're all got, like really basic, but there's probably something really clever I could do. Anyway, I want to get to today's sponsor, so let's get to that. Okay, today's sponsor is Reolink. Reolink, among being one of my most patient sponsors ever, uh, they're also incredibly generous because they send me not one, but two of their awesome cameras. This guy is the one I'm looking forward to really putting on my boat. This is a uh, one that is ethernet connected, so I'm gonna put it up on top of one of my masks. I'll be setting this one up soon, but I figured for today's purposes, you guys would be more interested in this guy. So this is the Reolink Argus Pro. Um, it's supposed to be basically a self-contained unit. Really cool, really clever design, and really great for safety on all kinds of off-grid applications because there's a lot involved here, but it's also not very complicated, which I love. So let's get into it. So this is the Argus Pro. Let's open up the box first. Be prepared, be Reolink. Yeah, all right. Pretty clean, and look at this thing. It looks like, um, wa no, not what's not Wally. -E. What's the other one? God, what's that movie? Anyway, Pixar character. It looks like a little cartoon character. It's so cute. Look at it. And underneath, we've got some mounting hardware. It's got the battery pack. It's a separate unit. This is a lot of juice. It actually, it will take speed charging too. It'll take nine volts of, uh, of juice, not just five volts. So pretty awesome. What do we got back here? So this is a USB charging port, okay, brilliant. And oh, this is like, oh, it's so soft. Neoprene kind of cover for it. Got a little micro USB-B cable. Okay, and then we got a little tripod stand here, okay? So this has got a little bit of articulation and a lock-in. But you're only gonna set this once, so I mean, I'm not super concerned with getting a legitimate anything else under here. No, all right, so we're good. So let's get into this. Basically, she's a self-contained unit um, she's got her own micro SD card reader inside so she can save everything, but she's also Wi-Fi enabled. So she can broadcast her own network that you can connect your phone to or any device to and download the footage or get a real time look. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this. So essentially with this big battery pack, you just plug this bad boy in and everything else is wireless. Please run Reolink up, add the camera and set it up. All right, well, I guess I'll go do that. All right, so you use your smartphone to control this. I'm gonna go find the Real Link app now and install it. All right, after a few little delays, I did finally get it. Um, pro tip, if you're gonna set this thing up, make sure it has a good connection to your Wi-Fi network. Um, my ne Wi-Fi network here is still spotty because I'm still waiting on one more part for my Wi-Fi antenna. But uh, yeah, she's finally up and running. There she is right there. We gotta go set this thing up somewhere where I can actually see the boat. So let's go do that. All right, so this mooring piling, long ago they used to use this for logging booms. Nowadays, it's just a little, little home for purple martins who come and hang out with me on the boat all the time. They're really cool, but we're gonna give them a little guest. Dear Europe, that's why we don't use Robertsons. They're awful. All right, that's the 1080p, very wide angle security camera. She's got night vision, she's got battery packs, she's got her own solar panel. 
And for those of you on my Patreon, you guys get to check out the live feed of the boat anytime you want. Um, you can just basically see that it's probably going to be raining for the next four months. <laughs> so when I complain about the rain, you can see that it's real. It does rain a lot here. It's not raining right now though, so soak it in. Beautiful sunshine, look at that. Well, like beautiful, beautiful light. <laughs> Something. All right, after the installation, that's all gone pretty smoothly, but good news, guys. I've been dealing with Alibaba and getting new uh, BMSs. I can't believe how fast these turned up. So straight from Alibaba, straight from the factory, we've got ourselves 10 uh, waterproof this time, BMS modules, waterproof. So hopefully that'll make it last a bit longer. All the ends are tinned, which is nice. So yeah, this is a little bit higher quality and it was significantly cheaper than my last set, which is embarrassing because the last set was awful quality, less amperage, less everything, not waterproof, not tin connections. And uh, yeah, I spent at least twice what I spent on this. So very happy, thank you very much. Let's get to wiring some of these suckers in then. Good morning, the sun is back! Maybe only for today. So I'm gonna make some use of it and then get out there and do some work. Um, but I'll show you what I've been working on because um, we've had a couple rainy days and I haven't filmed. But I've been working on, <clears throat> as you could tell from the clickbaity title of this video, waterproof batteries. Yeah, uh, um, so these are the new BMSs and they are waterproof. Um, Waterproof maybe is a strong word. Maybe it's a little clickbaity because honestly, yes, the terminals are still exposed. Um, yes, the BMS like um, wiring harness here, this this 13 series harness is still exposed. So, um, and the connectors of course at the ends are XT90 connectors. And I mean, that's like, it's pretty good, but it's not waterproof. Like I wouldn't use it in a submarine. But, you know, with a few more modifications if I didn't want to take it apart all the time. Because that's the thing, I'm not 100% that I'm going to keep these batteries in this exact configuration. I'm probably going to have to remove some dead cells, blah, blah, blah. So, sealing it up, like, totally and just coating the thing in epoxy or something like that just isn't really an option for me. So, yeah, this is as close as we're going to get, I think, for the waterproofiness. But it's a definite improvement over these old guys. Let's just fish one of these out of the garbage here. Oh, this one's got some soup on it. Gross. Look at that. Boom, that's what happens to these exposed ones when some of these circuits start failing. Bang, bang, bang. Lots of smoke, no bueno, but luckily it's a like an automatic shutdown relay that shuts down the battery from the bank. And I mean, that's the thing, you can't really turn a battery off. You can just disconnect it from its loads. But uh, you know, if a battery's doing crazy things, then a battery's doing crazy things, and it'll make up its own damn mind. So. We got some sunshine today. We're going to be charging up the new batteries. I'm going to test them one by one. Um, I decided this time instead of sister pairing them, as I had done before, I'm now individually doing them. So every single cell gets its own wire. So there's two BMSs, there's two 12 series batteries there, so on and so forth. You know, it's going to make it a lot more tedious and a little bit more expensive. But um, in the end, uh, if I have a battery fail or a cell fail, I won't take another one down with it. It'll all be on its own completely. So it should save me some money. Um, and I think, you know, for the future, well, we'll see. I've got some plans for 18650s and it seems incredibly irresponsible and expensive to do this for 18650s because, I mean, they're only like three amps each. So like, you know, 12 of those gets one BMS. That seems a little, little excessive. We'll see. We'll see what we do. Uh, I'm happy with this for this one because, you know, these cells are so large. They're 35 amp hours each. So, you know, 218 35 amp hour cells. I mean, it's a lot of connections to make, but, uh, 
yeah. No, I'm happy. I'm happy and uh, let's get to work. So since I had a little sunshine and I got this area dry this morning, I laid in some of the lip that the window is going to seal up against. It's not very thick, but it's about two inches deep. So the window I'm planning to do is about one inch thick and then, so it's, it's double paned and then one inch thick with some extra security plastic on it. I'll get into that later on when I finally order it, but um, it's going to take up an inch. So the frame, I'm making the frame two inches and it'll have a half inch on either side um, of extra strength around it glued all together as one unit. It'll make replacing glass a little tedious, but that's not a big deal because, I mean, I'm just making them out of fur, and what is it to just run another couple pieces through the table saw and make some new frames if I smash a window, which, given the strength of window I'm going for, I seriously doubt it's gonna happen. But that's why I have two panes, right? Like a windshield on a car, just like a windshield. One thing I had to add though, uh, I didn't account for this in the original design, or some drain holes right here. Basically what I did was I just put a half inch hole um, with my big drill bit and then I slowly but surely Q-tipped uh, epoxy all around the inside. And we'll do a few coats of that just to ensure that no water gets in down below and rots that out. But um, yeah, just something I, I maybe should have thought about when I was first designing the windows. Um, but it just, you know, it didn't work any other way. I couldn't make the window now differently you know had I, had I started from a different point of view then maybe it would have been different but so far so good we just put the drain holes in like the lowest part and once it's all sanded and painted it'll look a lot cleaner this uh micro fibe is awesome stuff but it looks really nasty when you're laying it on um i might have made it a little bit too thin i don't know i'm still working on that and i think from now on i'm going to do micro fibe with polyester just because it's a lot cheaper. All right, well, I spent most of the afternoon just mucking around with the um, starboard side. Ooh, it's so sunny and so bright today. It's awesome, it sucks that we're going right back to rain for the next week or so, but today was a good one. Um, I did some fairing compound, let me show you. So this side over here has got some fairing compound. It's hard to see it, um, but yeah, it's gonna, well, it's probably pretty, yeah, it's already dry. The sun does a really good job of kicking that UV polyester stuff real good. Um, so yeah, a little bit of sanding and then we're gonna do the primer, seal it up like the rest of it. And we've got the rest of the kind of shape for this window. I just had to do this window here. It was the last one I kind of slacked off a little bit on that one. So had some more epoxying to do. And we're about ready to make the frames for it. Um, I've got the frames kind of cut but um, I've run out of wood to make the seats for the frames. So we're a bit of a stalemate there, but I mean, the frames are cut and measured and we just need to do a little bit more rabbiting on them and I can bring them in and get the windows made. How exciting is that? Windows, I got a, one of the frames made for up here. So they're all identical up here at least. So that way I can just send in one and get it made up. Oh boy. Yeah, pumped. Anyway, I just got a delivery and would you know it we're running low we got some more old timers epoxy i want to give a big thank you to joel who is the owner and proprietor of old timers um the guy has just had my back through this whole project he's been helping me by giving me all this epoxy at cost and it is like the best epoxy ever it's so good to use for this marine application stuff it is a slow cure so for a young guy like me who's super impatient um it's 
yeah, that part can be a little tedious. However, it does give a much stronger bond than some other epoxies I've used. So I'm super happy to have this, um, have a, a steady supply of this stuff that I can just use all throughout the boat because it is so strong. Even just one layer of six ounce cloth is enough to give this boat a much thicker skin, much tougher skin. And she's been a plywood boat for a long time. So just that little extra bit of skin should keep her going for a long, long time. Thank you so much, Joel. And talking about the windows, we also got, um, the hinges got sent in by somebody on the wish list, but your slip got lost somehow, I don't know, again. And somebody else sent in another electric blanket, so now we have an electric blanket in both berths, and it is so cozy. So I've been keeping the electric blankets underneath the sheet. So check this out, isn't this cool? Like, it's right underneath the sheet, so as soon as you lay down on it, you feel it, like, right in the lower part of your back. It just works its way out. It's so good. After a long day of like pulling muscles I didn't even know I pulled, I lay down and it just all melts away. Um, so this is the first time I've had it on this bed and I am so happy to have it on this bed. Now, um, it's gonna make things a lot more comfortable and a lot more efficient because the space heater burns 1800 watts. Um, I might not have to run it all the time, but that's a, that's a big drain, you know? This thing, this one burns 100 watts. Um, the other one I have is 80, I think. So. 80 or 100 watts, I can run that all night if I want, and it won't even barely touch my battery bank. So that is a big comfort, especially given the battery problems we've had recently. So I'm happy for that. Thank you, whoever sent this out. It helped makes my life a lot more comfortable on board. And I know that there's some fear on the electric blankets, whether or not it's gonna cook me alive. Well, there's a fear of a lot of things on this boat that might cook me alive. So <laughs> I'll just take my risks where I do, and um, for the power savings, I think it's totally worth it. So, and I'll give you an, a review uh, down the road. You know, we're gonna go through whole winter with this thing, so we'll figure it out. But yeah, very thankful to you guys. Thank you so much for the help on the Amazon wish list, and thank you, Joel, for helping me with that epoxy. It is a lifesaver. All right, today was a little bit of a hurry because we had some sunlight, and I didn't get to film all that much of it. But hopefully, you guys understand. Got a little bit of work done. Feeling pretty good. Oh man, I just love the way those windows look. I love the open space up there. It's gonna be so nice. Anyway, I wanna go introduce you to um, Tom and Josie. So they've been visiting with me here in the Bay for the last few days and they got a really cool boat. Let me go show you. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. But this is Marlo. Hey Marlo. He's so shy. He's a chit chatter. This is Josie. Tom's down below. But this is their boat Tempest and it's a Brent Swain 32. 36. 36 foot Brent Swain. Check this thing out. Uh, so a Brent Swain is a origami boat, built boat, um, which is kind of like Seeker, where it's one piece of metal that is cut and then welded, and as it's welded together, it all curves in and folds in. And uh, this one, instead of being steel, is aluminum, and it's pretty overbuilt. It's pretty intense. Check this out. Tom and Josie have been working on this boat for a long time, and they're not totally done, but they are cruising, which is awesome. So they're able to get around these Gulf Islands, the Southern Gulf Islands, and all the way up into Desolation Sound where they spent a lot of this summer. And they're able to do that even though the boat is like 99% there, you know? It's not like, they've still got work to do. They're still, like, they've been building sail covers and new bimini's and stuff like that today um, in the last few days. And they're still able to cruise around. And that's a big inspiration to me. I love that. I love the idea that um, even though my boat project might take a long time, you know, the time of sitting around in Dagnan Bay is not necessarily as long. First we have the haul out. First we got a lot of other work to do. But I'm hoping that in March, when I splash down after the haul out, we can start cruising the southern Gulf Islands. At least get over to Salt Spring, at least go check out Valdez, at least go check out Thetis and see some of those other islands around. Maybe get all the way down to Victoria. We'll see. Uh, that's the dream. Anyway, let's go have a campfire. I so.
I want to give a huge thank you to Reolink for sponsoring this episode. If you guys are interested in off-grid security solutions, go check out the link in the description for the Argus Pro 2. I'm about two weeks into using this thing and I absolutely love how I haven't had to touch a single thing on it. It's awesome.